Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti. I am MrPhotographer.com. Recently, someone was looking at the wildlife images I have on my Instagram and they direct messaged me asking me if I could do a video demonstrating my wildlife workflow. I've actually done videos in the past showing off bits and pieces of my wildlife workflow, but I guess I've never really done a video just kind of demonstrating it from beginning to end. So that's what I'm going to do here, although I must qualify this by saying that it varies. Sometimes I do some things and sometimes I do other things. So this will be more generalized and I'll tell you how I go about uh, processing a wildlife image. Now, strictly, this isn't a wildlife image. Of course, it is of an animal, a bald eagle, but it was taken at the zoo. So this workflow is how I generally would process feathers and fur, whether they're zoo animals or true wildlife. Now, because I get asked a lot, I'll just mention that uh, this was taken with a Nikon D500 and a Nikon 200 to 500 millimeter lens. If you ever watch any of my videos in the description below the video, I try to always put the gear I use to capture the image so you could check that out there. Now, as far as what I do is typically I use Lightroom to organize my images and import them off the uh, memory card. So I bring all the images into Lightroom and then I use Lightroom for preliminary uh, processing and for this specific image uh, it didn't need to be cropped at all I was uh, captured it the way I wanted to in camera and I went to the basic tab and I didn't do anything with profiles or white balance I just left that alone and you could see I moved four sliders here highlight shadows whites and blacks and then I went down, I didn't do any texture, clarity, or dehaze, and this is typically what I'll do. And I added some saturation, just uh, plus 10. I usually don't go much over 10 uh, on saturation for any image. Um, and for this image, you can see it doesn't need it. So it's at plus 10. Then what I did was I went to the tone curve, and I went to the point curve, which is the second one from the left, and I added medium contrast. Uh, with the drop down and that's all i did there i i often prefer to add contrast with the tone curve uh, than using the contrast slider if you compare the tool to you'll see that the contrast that when you apply it with the slider or with the tone curve it's slightly different and often i prefer the way the tone curve looks so i'll use that i didn't do anything for the u uh, saturation color so I or luminance I'm sorry so I totally ignored that tab I didn't do any color grading at all uh, detail I have sharpening I purposely put it all the way down to zero because I prefer to use uh, or do sharpening later either with a plug-in or later on in Lightroom and I'll show you a uh, noise reduction I have that at zero because I prefer to use Topaz Labs Denoise AI and I will be doing that in a moment and color noise reduction, I do have that at 25, and that's actually the default value uh, for this camera, at least in Lightroom. And I think uh, Lightroom does a nice job on removing color noise, so I will typically leave that alone and not move that to zero. Lens corrections, it was a DSLR with a Nikon uh, 200 to 500 millimeter lens, so I have all that checked, including the chromatic aberration. Nothing special there. Didn't do anything with transform, nothing with effects, and no calibration. So that is everything I do in Lightroom to this point. Now this was shot um, with an ISO of 800. And if I zoom in, the noise is, is pretty much controlled. There is some noise though I could see in the background. I'm not sure you could see it in the image or on the video I mean. But there is also some noise in the white uh, feathers right up in here. And I do want to remove that uh, because often I do print my wildlife images and I do large prints. So I do want to get that under control. So I'm going to, at this point, send this to Denoise AI. And to do that, I just right click on the image and go down to Edit In. And then I go down to Denoise AI. And then uh, I use. Uh, because it's a raw file, it has to edit a copy with Lightroom adjustments. You can see everything else is grayed out. I'm going to use a TIFF Profoto RGB, 16 bits per component, resolution of 360 without any compression, and I'll click Edit. You can see a progress bar in the top left-hand corner. 
Lightroom is creating the TIFF file with those specifications. And once the TIFF file is created, it will open it up into Denoise AI. Now I have Denoise AI uh, set up with the comparison view. Uh, that's the bottom view here where I could see all three denoise modes or noise reduction modes. Uh, the far left is the original image without any noise reduction at all. This is the image with denoise AI. The bottom left is the AI clear mode. And then the bottom right is the low light mode. Now just glancing at it where it is positioned on the image now, denoise AI looks awesome. If you compare it to the original, you could see that uh, this detail in here, like just like on the, the neck of the bird or the beginning of the neck, you could see how it's much more, I hope, hopefully you could see in the video, much more refined here. But the noise that I actually noticed was up above the bird's eye. So I'm gonna move uh, this up over here and it's gonna have to re-render once I do that. So we'll let it re-render and you could see um, it removed the noise. Hopefully you could see in the video. Denoise AI and low light mode actually look like the two best modes, but Denoise AI looks slightly better. Now I do have uh, some settings here that I did for my previous image. Um, you could see here. So it actually looks pretty good. As far as AI clear mode, I have that set to auto and low light mode I have set to auto. So that may be, may be why uh, Denoise just looks better is because I have these settings. So what I'll do is I'll just remember these numbers 47 and 52 and I'll just see if auto looks any better. And you can see it really, it, it moved um, Denoise or remove noise slider to three um, and I could still see some noise up in the feathers up here. So I'm gonna move that back up towards where it was and let it re-render and enhance sharpness a little bit looks pretty good then you know I usually don't overthink this if I just look and I really do like it and I do think that with Denoise AI with these settings I just dialed in I think it looks fine so I'm going to use that now to make sure you're using that make sure that it's blue in the corner compared to the other two. So that means you're active, it's active over here, and then click apply. Um, sometimes I'll mask it so it will only remove noise where I want it to remove noise, like from the background. But in here, there is some noise on the bird's uh, forehead, top of the head, and there is noise in the background. So I'll let it remove noise everywhere. And it of course is enhancing the sharpness as well. So I'm gonna click apply. And it will now go through and remove the noise from the entire image and then open up uh, back into Lightroom. And then I'll continue on with my processing. All right, here's the image. I'm gonna hit the F6 key on my keyboard to bring up the um, film strip at the bottom and we could compare them both. Uh, this, of course, is the raw file, the original raw file. And I'll zoom in on that. And then we'll go over and look at the noise reduced um, sharpness enhanced version of the image. And I think right away, if you look over here, like right in here, look how it enhances the sharpness. So that's why I really like the noise because it really not only removes the noise, but it helps bring back uh, some of the sharpness of the image. So I really like what it did. There again is the original raw file with just Lightroom processing. And there is the noise reduced image. If you look up in here and in here, here's the original image. You could see noise hopefully and some noise in the white feathers. And then if I go back down here, you could see that it removed the noise nicely. Now at this point, um, what I would do if I needed to, I would send it to Gigapixel. I forgot to mention that whenever I send an image to Denoise, I send the uncropped version of the image because Denoise works best when it has more pixels to work with. So if, let's say, I shot this instead of with at 450 millimeters, let's say I shot it at, you know, 100 millimeters or something, and it was, you know, I had to 
do a substantial crop on the image, I wouldn't crop it before I sent it to Denoise. So I would send the full uncropped image to Denoise. Then once it came back into Lightroom with the noise removed, I would do my crop. Then once I do my crop, I would send it to Gigapixel so I could gain back that resolution. Now in this case, I don't need to send it to Gigapixel because I have a full resolution image. I didn't need to crop to begin with. Then my next step is to work on some sharpening and then I'll show you how I would then kind of do some finishing touches to the image. Now as far as sharpening is concerned, if it really needs a lot of sharpening, I'll send it to Sharpen AI. But this image, it's pretty sharp already. I don't need to send it to Sharpen AI, in my opinion. I'll just go to the Detail tab, and then I'll use Lightroom Sharpening, and just move the sharpen, or the amount of sharpening to the right. And here, I, I am guilty of this. I will over sharpen an image. And what, we'll, what I'll do is I'll sharpen it like right now. There's no set number I put in. I know some, I've, some people, uh, I just put, move it to 30 every time, you know. I don't do that. It's an image by image basis. And I tend to overdo it at first, I've noticed. And then once I walk away and let my eyes rest and my brain reset, when I come back and look at it, I'll say, oh yeah, that's over sharpened. And I'll just bring it down. But in this case, now, those of, many of you may be looking at this and go, wow, that's over sharpened. Uh, it may be, uh, but I'll leave it at 40 for now. And then later on, I may come back and pull that back down. All right, now that it's sharpened, and you notice too, no, nowhere in my workflow did I uh, use clarity or dehaze, um, or I'm sorry, texture or clarity. I most often won't do that on my wildlife images. I find that um, most often my wildlife images are shot at higher ISOs, so I have to use Denoise AI, and Denoise AI does a nice job of doing, uh, you know, enhancing the texture and doing things that Clarity might do. So I really don't want to overdo it. All right, now finishing touches. That could be a vignette. It could be something that I'll do to um, minimize the background. And that's what I'm going to do here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the radial filter. And I'm going to put a radial filter on the image or, or just off the image. This may sound weird. But the, what I'll do is I'll go over here on the left. And I'll just click and I'm going to put a little tiny radial filter just outside the image. And you can see when I hover over the pin in the middle, the entire image is covered in red. With the invert checkbox unchecked, what will happen is everything outside of the radial filter gets affected by the adjustments. For example, if I bring exposure all the way down, it affects every single pixel in the image. What I want to try to do here is I want to minimize the background. So what I'm going to do is I am going to bring exposure down. You can see how it's affecting everything. But then what I'll do is I'll go get a range mask and I'm going to get a color mask because that background is, you know, a very specific color compared to the bird. I'll get the uh, range, uh, color range selector eyedropper and I'll click on the background. Now it's still affecting the bird slightly. So what I'll do is I'll come over here, well, significantly, I should say. I'll come over to this feather um, slider and move that around and see if it affects it. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm on the wrong thing. I meant the amount slider here, apologize for that. And I'll move that. And you can see how it's removing it from the bird as I move it to left. But it's also removing it from the background a little bit. Well, I'll leave it to the far left and I'm going to add to this selection. So if I just click again, it replaces the previous click with the new click. What you do is hold in the shift key and you'll see you get that little plus sign now so you could add to your selection. So you could click around and add. You can see how it's kind of shifting now. So you reach a point where it's just each click isn't getting you any any better. All right. So I have it, but it still is affecting the bird. Let me put the eyedropper away and let me turn the entire radio filter off. And you can see it is affecting the bird still that I don't want it to. You can see how it's kind of adding some contrast there that I don't want. So what I'll do now is I'll go over to brush. See inside of the radial filter, there's a little brush uh, sub tab here. Don't click on the real brush. You want to click on the word brush. 
And when you do that, brush tools open up down here. And if you click on the erase brush, I get erase this adjustment from where I don't want it. Make sure auto mask is checked. That way that if I just spill over the line a little bit, it won't affect the background or it will minimally affect the background. Then I'll come in here and I'll erase it from wherever I don't want it to be affected. And you can see hopefully that it's being erased from the bird. Now you might have to click a lot. Um, often what I'll do, I'll turn auto mask off and do the middle part, you like away from the edges. And then you could see that it will be more effective. And my mouse is kind of acting up at the moment. And I'll do that. And then once I have to get near the edges, I'll turn auto mask on. Because what it does, auto mask does, it looks right where that minus sign is in the middle, right where I click. It makes note of the tone, texture, and color right there. And then it, as I move, it will only apply the brush stroke or the erase brush to similar tone, texture, and color. So, the, you know, you're, you're going as you're brushing, you're getting to varying tone and texture. So you may have to click a lot. So it samples a lot of different areas and get it removed from the bird as much as possible. I noticed a lot down here, yeah. Like that. So you could see, as I mentioned, I spend a lot more time on wildlife images than any other type of image. All right, let's do a before after the uh, radio filter again. There's before and there's after. You can see how I darkened down that background. And a little bit in here, I think we need to get it. Here, let's uh, take auto mask off. See if I could do this without spilling over the edge. And there's before, there's after. That's, um, that's it. That looks pretty much it. I may now compound or add to this. I'll close down the radio filter. I'm done with it. Um, I'll finish it off with a vignette sometimes. I don't think this image actually needs it, but I would add a vignette. You can see how I don't like it. It's kind of encroaching on the bottom of the bird's uh, neck area there. I don't want that. I think it looks fine the way it is. So that is um, typically my wildlife workflow. So I start out in Lightroom, then I'll send the full resolution uncropped image to Topaz Labs to Noise AI to remove noise, decide which of the three modes is best. I may manually dial in the mode I want to use, come back into Lightroom, then I'll crop it. And if I do a substantial crop, I'll send it to Gigapixel AI to regain that resolution. Then when it comes back into uh, Lightroom, I'll work on sharpening and I'll determine, does it need to go to sharpen AI? Most often, it I doesn't need to go to sharpen AI. Uh, as you notice, Denoise AI does sharpening. Gigapixel AI will add to sharpening as well. And typically, it doesn't have to unless you really have an issue with it, like you have camera motion, um, subject motion, or you didn't nail focus. In those three instances, it would have to go to sharpen AI. Then once it comes back, I do finishing touches similar to what I did now. I may just do something to minimize the background, may add a vignette, things like that. So I hope that um, helps you maybe, or at least gives you some ideas on how you could process your wildlife images. If you have a wildlife images, you're really, oh, if you have wildlife images, if you have a wildlife image that you're really proud of, tag me on Instagram. I'm at Anthony Morganti on Instagram. I would like to see it. Thank you everyone for watching my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.